Hello and welcome to Kittrick Farms. We're back with another episode of UMRV, Upper Mississippi River Valley, and we've got a few updates today. Uh, based on a lot of discussion in the comments of my last few videos, I have decided to switch out the injectors for uh, three of the spreaders here. We're going to be able to then hopefully spread some manure on our grass fields. I've also installed the enhanced animal system mod, so we've got actual calves walking around here on the farm right right now, which is pretty cool. We'll be taking a closer look at some of this a little bit later, but maybe just since we're talking about it, um, that breaks things down. So we've got the cows in our main barn that are producing milk. And since that update, our heifers that are not quite to giving birth are no longer producing milk, which makes sense to me. Uh, so a little bit more realistic. It does mean we're going to make a little bit less money for the next few months until they do hit this uh, puberty mark. I think it's 18 months where Farmson's going to have them start giving birth. So we're going to be waiting for that. And then our calves, as you can see, are here and doing good. Now, we've got a problem here in that their health is at 0%, which actually makes me very nervous because I think this mod has the option that it's going to remove animals at 0% health. And this particular uh version of the map that i have kind of bugs out when you just feed them hay and it doesn't give them any health i would need to actually give them tmr i think to see that health start coming up so i'm a little bit nervous about this we're gonna see what happens if uh they if we start losing cows because of the bug here we might have to do something i might just have to start feeding them tmr or silage maybe straight up i don't know we're gonna figure it out but the other thing that this mod does is you can see for each barn it tells me what the predicted annual feed requirement is going to be and this makes me quite nervous because it says we're going to need 9 million food per year in this barn 3 million at the stage the calves are at right now and 6 million for these heifers uh, and assuming the heifers are going to be cows soon here that means that really i'm probably going to end up needing 9 million of both and that is a little bit concerning i don't think we're making that much food if we look here on the time saving stock check mod, we can see things in liters and I've got right around a million liters of silage and 300,000 liters of TMR mixed up. I do have a million in each barn, but that comes up a lot short of a nine million. I don't know. I'm actually feeling more nervous now that we've got that mod installed than I was before. I don't know if it's accurate, though. We're going to have to figure that out. However, we got the... A uh, silage chopper out there going. I see my semi is probably stuck right now, so I should probably go deal with that. A lot of people have suggested that I remove some of the axles on this thing and I'll have less problems with it. I am completely agree, but unfortunately, I can't do that yet uh, because this is a leased trailer and I need to own it before I can customize it and I don't quite have enough money to buy it. You can see that I've got the front four axles and the rear axle lifted though, so there's only three that are coming in contact with the ground when I'm driving normally. It's just when I'm coming out of this driveway that the rest of those come into contact and cause me some problems. But the other semi and the chopper seem to be working great here. We don't have that much of this field left, so I'm not gonna be too stressed out about it. We can just help it out for the next few rounds. And we're going to jump over here into this manure spreader and we're going to take it out in the field here and see how this works you know make sure i've got automatic application rate turned on which i do and then i can change the nitrogen reference value i'm not sure what that's for i'm going to get this unfolded here we're going to try our hardest to not mess things up right just yet um just looking applying slurry amount depending on soil type everything looks good okay i know grass doesn't need a whole lot so this should be a relative easy spread and as you can see it's a nice wide spread pattern here with the three pipes i think it's probably a little bit wider than when we're doing it with the injectors so we may just end up completely switching over and leaving it like this i do because i I just modified the slurry tanker technically we could put the injectors back on at some point without any additional cost to us it did cost me 15 grand a little bit more than 15 grand to switch the slurry spreader over to this mode though 
Uh, so it was a bit of an investment here. We're maxed out on our loan once again because we've been buying some stuff. So we are at $20,000 cash, and that is all the cash I have available to me right now. Uh, so we're going to have to kind of keep an eye on things here. Uh, I wasn't necessarily planning on doing all of this job manually, but now that we've started it, I'll probably just have to finish it. I don't have... Uh, precision farming data for that little corner of the field there. That's something that we need to work out. We've got some little spots on some of these fields where we expanded the field with the field cultivator, kind of smoothed the lines out, and I haven't come back out here and either repurchased or resampled the precision farming soil uh, information. But I am enjoying how much faster we're covering some ground with the expanded slurry spread pattern here i i do as much as i like the injectors i think it looks cool uh given how much we've scaled up the farm here i feel like this is almost twice as wide as when we were using the injectors maybe not quite but i feel like the injectors were pretty much as wide as our tractor and these booms stick out quite a bit further than that so we're going to be continuing to use this moving forward i think just to keep things simple that's an awful lot of nitrogen that we're putting down in some areas, given that grass doesn't use very much at all. I'm getting a little bit nervous about our application, our automatic application rate here. I certainly shouldn't be seeing levels up at the, like, 100 or more uh, nitrogen, I wouldn't think. And even this nice a big tractor is struggling to pull this tank up the steep hill here. I'm kind of surprised by that, to be honest. Okay, I am going to, I think at this point, set up a GPS course of some kind just to get us going on the straight and narrow. Something about like that should work. I got off by a degree. It'll probably drive me nuts that I'm doing this field to 81 degrees instead of 80 degrees, 180 degrees, but it is what it is. We're not looking to goof off with it too much today. I do just want to kind of get things going, and the precision farming should keep me from over-applying here, hopefully. So I don't need to bother turning things on and off. It'll only apply where it needs to. We'll drop things down a few gears. Maybe I'll have an easier time getting up the hill if we're not struggling to push our gearing to the max. I don't think we're going to go much faster than 9 miles an hour here anyway. And so I'm doing 9 in 13th gear. I'm doing 9 in 12th gear. We'll leave it in 12th gear. That'll give me the power to get up these hills. And then around we go. I guess it is leaving things in a nice stable uh, set. We're not burning through a bunch of slurry while I'm driving over areas we've already done. Uh, so that's maybe the readings I'm getting when I was on the edges of the field there were just uh, the very edge parts where maybe I don't have actual grass planted and it's something else in the field there or it's like an empty spot that's not quite cultivated. I see some dark green areas right on the outside edges of the map. I suspect maybe that's where I'm getting my overly high readings if we actually stop things and jump out here. Oh no, we're over applying nitrogen a little bit here. It says perfect at 90 out of 65, so I guess I get a little bit of leeway there. Maybe there's a minimum amount of nitrogen that I can increment when we're uh, spreading it. I don't know, but as long as Precision Farming thinks it's perfect, we shouldn't get penalized for it, and that's really all that matters. GPS is definitely gonna save us a little bit of heartache here, though, on making sure we're going down these up-down rows in a straight way. I can see that my other semi-trailer has made it out into the field across from us there and is unloading that chopper, which leaves me excited that things are working out but I can't tell oh I think that semi is just coming back and parking that means he made it all the way out to the uh, silo and back perfect everything's working according to plan for once 
And I'm excited with all these new mods on the save here. Things seem to be uh, looking up for us. I like having a little bit more information here. And I'm excited to know that when we do have cows that give birth, they should get auto sold now. Uh, so we're not just wasting that potential. We're actually going to make a little bit of money. Not a lot of money selling a bunch of calves. But every little dollar helps. And the next step is going to be trying to figure out what to do with all of this slurry. Now being able to spread some of it on the grass here is going to help out. But I suspect before too long here we are going to need uh, to jump into trying to find some kind of a production system to use up this slurry. And I've got my eye on the methane plant, I think, because that'll uh, give us the output of digestate that we can still use on our fields as fertilizer, but then also allow us to sell some things and get some money back. Now, we're almost empty. Rather than go part of the way down the field and have to refill, I'm going to turn around and come back and hit this corner. There's a little tiny bit in the corner that we missed uh, getting started here. And once we do that, I'm just going to jump over to these slurry pits and refill the spreader while we're right up here and in a great position to do so. Now I'm trying to remember which of these two tanks I need to actually empty out here. Uh, looks like uh, the one is 984. I'm guessing that's this one here is the, the pit that I'm looking for. Um, I'm not quite lined up here. Or no, I was. I just don't get a pop-up. I'm going to automatically start draining. That's right. I forget about that. And let's just come in here and look. We are draining out of the one that I need to. Both of these are really full, but I want to make sure we keep the milk cows as productive as possible here. And just like that, we're all topped off. Uh, hopefully we can get a couple of loads out of here. I'd like to really be able to wrap up all of our field work for the year before we have to worry about hauling all of this stuff out to a production. That would be a great... Uh, late fall winter type project for us to do if I can get the production built uh, before the snows on the ground and then we can spend our winter months uh, going back and forth between both feeding and hauling manure and doing some other odd tasks around the farm. I would enjoy that a lot. I think it would really kind of break up the gameplay a little bit to have some cool jobs to do over the winter time. Now this hill is super steep. So I'm going to try and gear down a little bit here, find my GPS path, maybe gear down another couple of gears. You got this, the little tractor that could. I guess it's not that little of a tractor. And there we go. Doing good. Uh, just checking over here on the other setup. It looks like we've switched some highs again and we're on the end row. Perfect which probably means I need to uh, fix the big semi one more time. Indeed we do. This is the only uh, sticking point we've got right now in this setup. It's everything else is working great. So we'll just give it a yank and away he goes. So after I'm done spreading on this field, we need to take it over to the field across the creek here. That field will need to be spread as well. We'll probably set up a worker to do that field. It won't take very long, though. I probably should have started over there and done the quote-unquote easier field myself and then set the worker off on this one, which is a little bit more time-consuming. That's all right. It's not like we've really got that many jobs left to do on the farm right now. Uh, we did make up a ton of TMR off-camera with all of the hay that we had left, and that really kind of ate up all of our other odd jobs for the moment. Once we move the clock forward into October, we do have that hay field to cut across the road there, so maybe we'll be able to do that here. Given how hard it's been trying to turn around on the side hill, I think I'm going to take one more headland pass off on this end here and get rid of a lot of our slanted area that will at least allow me to start turning as soon as we hit the slant rather than having to go all the way down towards the edge of the field. I feel like I was just having too much of a struggle with keeping everything out of the creek down there. It's a little bit hard to see where I've already spread here, so I think I'm probably overlapping a bit more than I need to. 
I'm going to straighten out my line here, follow a GPS track just so that we can start turning back in on our rows now. Next round here should be our last. I think we've got probably one full round left, maybe two at the most. We swing nice and wide now on this hill. I should be able to turn right back in to the previous path. If I oversteer a little bit, that's actually maybe better so we're not leaving a big chunk of unfertilized ground. Perfect. Yeah, we've got uh, one more round after this one, I, I guess. I overestimated by one pass. Final pass here. We've got plenty of slurry to get to the end. I'm not worried about that at all, and we'll just fill it up before we head across the creek here to the other field. Try and stay out of the creek, though. Don't need to be falling down there. Probably don't need to be spreading slurry down into the creek either. I am sure there's some kind of a EPA regulation against uh, putting raw manure right into a moving body of water. I'm going to also probably refuel this vehicle before we head over to the other field. It's not like we're going that far off of the farm, but I have a tendency to forget fuel on a regular basis on our vehicles. So it's going to be easier if we just hit that on the way out of the yard here, I think. I'm curious to see how much slurry we've really taken out of this pen at this point. We're going to have to start taking some out of one of the other pens pretty soon, I think. Uh, we're down to 920 here. We've got 960 over in that one and 730 in this one. So we will need to start taking some. I think that other one is the... A uh, barn across the way here that we need to empty out. We almost forgot, but at the last second, I remembered the fuel. We're going to use our gears a little bit more appropriately here. I always forget that we're using them, and then I remember about halfway through that's why we're going so slow. Some vehicles handle my ineptitude better than others. Uh, now, I am going to hook this thing up to course play, I think, for this field. The main reason for that is that will allow me to go manage the last of the silage harvest here. I want to make sure we're getting done with that job today. And I'm going to create a job with this guy. Uh, field position seems to be in the right spot. Number of headlands now with this thing, since I'm not using the injector... I could probably get away with two, you think? Let's see what that looks like. I can't really see what that looks like because we have uh, two courses here on the same field. I'm going to go ahead and just start this guy off, though. And this is why we needed to take over. It's a giant mess. I think with the hill here, the way that it is, we got sliding down a little bit and caused some issues. Now, the fact that I turned off auto drive for this guy means the other semi's coming out here to try and take over already, doesn't it? That's not what I wanted. We're going to try and get going here. We'll follow this as long as I can. And then at some point, this other guy's going to be a jerk and come take over. And we'll just send this guy up to the farm at that point. Well, I might just be able to stay up here with him. Well, surprisingly, we've managed to retain control of the output of the trap there and fill up our trailer. So I'm going to bring this full truck back up to the yard and get it empty. Or at least I'm going to get it past the driveway entrance here where we usually run into a little bit of problems. By the time I actually get to the driveway entrance, though, I feel like that other semi is going to be full. The chopper really cranks away on this field when things are working well. I'm constantly surprised by just the sheer volume of chaff we're getting off of this field. But given that we've got a hint that we're going to need probably over 25 million liters of food, uh, maybe that's a good thing. Oh, I'm looking over at the other field here with the manure spreader and realizing that we have it doing the headlands last uh, because that's how I did it with the injectors, which is probably fine for spreading manure as well. But uh, that's why my start point was in such an awkward position, I think. That explains a lot. We've got this load going into the harvester. I just wanted to give this a quick check. We're almost out of capacity for chaff again. 
And the silage is obviously still filled up without more hay. I can't make more TMR to keep things moving. I'm really hoping that we're going to be able to get all of this in there. If not, we're going to have to find another spot to put a silage bag. I've been trying to avoid putting those on our grass fields uh, just because I don't want them to be in the way. I want to be able to hop out there and do the mowing. So we're going to have to sort this all out here soon. But I've got at least this truck in there. Maybe if I can fill this truck and the other one up one more time, we might be done with that field. I think I'm making about a round with the forage harvester with this particular semi-trailer. I can't really recall. I know there's not that much left out there in the field, but the rows are going to get shorter as we finish it out just based on the angle that we're going at. So one can hope that we'll have just enough room. I can see our other semi already coming back. I did manually drive this guy up and back just because I knew I would be just a little bit more efficient than if I let auto drive take over the driver. I don't slow around quite as much on the corners and such as auto drive does. And I don't get stuck coming out of the field either. So that's also a bonus. We're not quite getting there. We really needed that third truck to work out for us that we had in the previous episode. It just uh, it, it wasn't working. We were having too many problems with it at the time. And I've since talked to Dairy Deer uh, Skywalker Farms about that truck and how I configured it and what might work better for it in the future. So we might uh, have to swap some equipment out for the next harvest here in the fall. But for today, we're going to just keep going with the stuff that we've got. Oh, I'm definitely fooling myself if I thought we could get the rest of this field into two trucks. We are a little bit further away from that than I thought. This thing does hold quite a bit of chaff, but not that much. Hopefully, though, at least that other semi is getting into the harvest store. And we'll be able to get two more trucks off of this field. That would be nice, at least. Looks like our manure spreader is still going out there as well. I was kind of expecting to have to refill him by now. Uh, so the fact that that's still going strong is good. We'll have to go over there and check in on it once I get this truck headed back up to the farm. Uh, I'm just going to continue driving him here as long as we're around. I'll take care of turning around on the end row here, I think at least. Well, our other semi never ended up coming back out to the field here which given that that guy never gets stuck up in the yard as far as I know, I suspect we don't have enough room to put any more chaff in the harvest store. In fact, opening up the menu verifies that for sure. So that's gonna be not until we cut some grass that we're gonna be able to get that chaff out of there unless we buy and set up another bag. So let's go back up to the yard here with this guy and we're gonna see if we can find one more spot for another bag. I'm hoping one bag is going to keep us going here. I really shouldn't have geared up there. This thing is full and heavy. It causes us a little bit of a slowdown when we turn too tight here, which is probably pretty realistic with how much chaff we've got in this uh, trailer. But I regress. Let's get up to the yard and figure out where we're going to put all this silage. we got to get this field done so we can get some more hay and make some more TMR. Oh yeah, this guy barely even emptied anything out of his hopper, at least visually. 74% still. That's not going to cut it, sir. All right, I'm going to turn the workers off for a minute. We're going to go grab the tractor with the uh, silage packer on it here and see if I can find a good spot to set this up. We might as well just buy a bag while we're here. The tunnel goes that way. I'm hoping I can drive with this thing on there. We're going to find out. Oh, no, it's going to start loading that chaff out as soon as I do that. Let me not connect that. OK, no, it's doing it anyway. That was not what I was hoping. I didn't even think about it. I forgot that they will move even when not connected. It'll fill that bag. I'm going to put this last ag bag right over here on the edge of the woods. Probably not the best place for it in reality. However, I'm just at a loss where else I want to put stuff for the time being. Let me back this thing up out of the way. I would go on the other side and load from the driveway and have the bag 
proceed towards um, the field. It, like, if I put it over here, unfortunately, the uh, zone for emptying into this is on this side of things. And as far as I could tell, there is no way to reverse that. Nope, I don't see a, like, flip things around or anything like that. So we're just going to put it right here. It should be nice and out of the way. And we'll see how this goes. I should be able to back these semis right up to that. Alright, let's see how well I can get this semi backed in here. It's been a minute since we did any excessive backing up. Not that this is a particularly hard target to hit. There we go. I'm hoping... Well, I, I know for a fact, I think it holds two of the big semi, if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to be able to get all of this in in all of the big semi we've got out there. But the next semi that we bring out is probably going to fill this bag up. I am going to use auto drive. We're going to send this guy right back out to the field. We've got our chopper sitting out there with nothing to do waiting for us, which is not usually what I like with that chopper's done a lot more sitting around than I'd prefer. I think I can start this guy off on a drive right there though. And then similarly, I'm going to go empty this big boy out. And then I'm going to go check on our manure spreader because I think that thing has probably run out of manure by now and is just waiting for me to come out there and do something about it. We've just had our hands full. We're trying to work on the highest priority job right now, which is keeping the silage moving here. And then we'll follow up on the secondary jobs, like making our manure situation be a little bit more manageable. Although if we've got manure to do on all of our fields now, including the grass fields, do I still need the sprayer? Probably because we use that sprayer for weed control as well, I guess. It was nice. It was super fast to knock out these grass fields with that big sprayer. But I guess the grass fields not being that big, it'll be pretty fast to knock them out with the slurry spreader as well. The fact that I need to fertilize the grass three times a year should help us uh, find uses for all of the slurry product though. And I'm seeing my ag bag is kind of bouncing around here a little bit. I don't know what's going on with this mod. I keep calling it an ag bag because that's the brand of the uh, packer there. I guess it would be a silage bag. There we go. We got it to fit. It's probably going to take a minute to process all of that out into the bag, but that's all right. I know we can dump into that thing just a little bit faster than it keeps up with us. Here we go. And this guy should be able to find his way back out to the field now. We're 73% full on this bag. If I need it, I can put another bag next to it here too. So that's good. And we are out of slurry down here, but I think we got the whole field. Let's check. It's a little hard to see uh, with all the course play courses on here, but I do think we've got nitrogen spread on this entire field. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and fire this up. We'll drive it back up to the farm. And, oh, we do. We've got 30 gallons of slurry still. I just saw the 0% initially. Uh, but we've got 30 gallons in there, which it would have spread it to zero if we uh, needed to do any more. That's pretty cool, knowing that one tank of slurry is perfect for this field. That will make future jobs all that much easier. I suppose I should not drive on our nice concrete sidewalk with the big heavy tractor. And if I recall, it was the calves that were the second fullest, or now the fullest, of the barns. Just double checking this barn here. Yeah, so we're going to pull a run out of this barn. That will kind of keep everything equal. And next episode, we're going to be figuring out where we're going to put a methane plant, I think, to start using up this slurry. I think that's what I want to do. It'll be a fun thing to play around with. We'll go into business for ourselves here, uh, selling off some electricity to the grid. I think that'll be a good chance for us to play around with the production system a little bit. Double checking on how forage harvest is going. Looking good. This semi's on the move already. This guy has made it out here and is looking for a path out to the combine. Everything's good. We're cruising again. 
All right, let's, uh, we'll run forward here a little bit. We'll keep pushing on this uh, corn silage. We've been doing corn silage for the last four or five episodes now, I feel like. Uh, so I'm going to keep pushing on this, and we'll check in in just a few minutes after we get a little bit further here. We've had to start a second bag here, which is as expected. But we are, well, we're done with the long rows. It looks like we've got a bit of a collision going on over here maybe i'll jump over here while we're unloading get this semi out of the way oh it is trying to figure it out at least i just think that because the forage harvesters following along here we're getting into some pathing issues that's all right let me just get turned to the side here there we go this should do it we did miss a little bit in the corner there i'm not going to stress out about it too much though We'll get this guy going to the combine. Should be able to figure it out from here, one would hope. And because we're in those short rows, I'm beginning to wonder now, now maybe we'll get it into these two semis. I think with this bag that we just started and the semis themselves, I'm really hoping this is the, this is the moment. We've got enough capacity for the rest of the feed here to knock this field out and finally be done. Only one way to find out though, so let's get trucking. up the big uh, semi here one more time it looks like i'm just about done one more pass maybe two uh, to finish up this field hoping that fits into that little trailer i've got a little bit more room in the bag for some more silage but not enough for this big trailer uh, so what i'm hoping is that i can just park this guy up on the farm and we're gonna run that smaller trailer uh, until we get this field done and dump what we can into the bag and leave the remainder in that small trailer. Well, that's going to work out the best because what I really want to do is move this chaff right into the harvest store as soon as we've got some capacity and I'd rather have it all in the larger uh, semi here uh, because we're not going to get a lot of room for silage so it's not like I can empty out the ag bags after the fact. And the reason for that is because the harvester is going to start creating silage as soon as we start taking some out of there and moving that chaff into silage. So I've got room for more chaff as soon as we start using silage, but I won't have more room for silage until we've used uh, a million liters of it and gotten all of the chaff converted. So really more than a million liters. Well, that's all right. I'm not complaining. We need all this food. Let's get this up to the farm and see what happens. I shouldn't need the pickup up here anymore. We did just top off the silage additive not that long ago. Got a little bit of that left here on the pallet, not a lot, uh, but since we just topped it off like two rounds ago, I don't think we're gonna get enough room in the forage harvester there for the rest of the silage additive, which is a shame. We've only got just the smallest amount left. I was hoping to get rid of this pallet and call it a day but there's always next season and it looks like we've actually finished this field up with no problems 
We're not even half full on this smaller semi, so this may all actually go right into the bag. So I'm going to run this up to the yard here and find out. Looks like we just managed to get that whole trailer in here. 98%. We've got room for just a smidgen more, but I like it. That way we don't have any leftover chaff sitting in the packer itself. Uh, everything worked out perfectly here. I uh, love it. I love it. All right, I'm going to get this equipment parked here, and then let's take a quick walk around and do one last look at where we are with all of our animals. I'm kind of curious where the feed is at now as well. I want to say that the capacity on these ag bags is going to show up in the um, time saving stock check menu whatever that thing's called so let's get this shut down and pull this up here we've got well it just caps out at a million liters maybe it can't show all of that because it's been saying this since before we put that other ag bag out uh, we've got a lot more silage than uh, than we think is what I'm kind of thinking there. Uh, 261 there, 260 there. We've got several of them over there. We might actually be doing a lot better in silage than I anticipated. Uh, I wish I knew just off the top of my head how many liters one of these bags was. Unfortunately, I can't easily switch back and forth between that with the way that we've got our unit convert mod set up at the moment but i do know that we're going to be ready to start mowing that grass next time and i'm really feeling like this grass field right across from the farm here is about to get converted into more yard space for us i think this is going to turn into the dedicated spot where we put our methane uh, production facility. It's relatively flat. We can do some landscaping. It's right across from our main production areas, easy to get in and out of. I think that's going to be where we go to. However, I think to date we're going to wrap up the episode here, and next time we're going to really get moving on these animals now that we've got our feed situation all sorted out. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. If you did, hit that like button. It helps me out a lot. That's all for today. Kedrick, out.